This particular uh, lesson is about bitterness. Yes, bitterness. Think of bitterness as mold. Picture mold on your bread. You get a nice, full, fluffy loaf of bread, and you're looking forward to sinking your teeth into it. You buy it straight from the store. It looks like it's in great condition. Everything looks great. Till you open up the package and you find out there's mold on those slices. Now, my question to you is, do you want to eat it? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, the reason for the mold is because it's been there too long. You may have missed the date and the store may have missed getting rid of it. And you end up with some pretty old bread. Well, that's the way it is with some of our pent up anger. We've kept it a little too long. We've nursed it and, and hidden it in the dark so nobody would see it, but it's still there. And because it's in the dark, it's setting up mold. Now, bacteria grows quickly in the dark and creates horrible levels of mold. If you've ever had a science class with a Petri dish, that stuff looks nasty, doesn't it? Well, that's the way your bitterness looks to God. It looks nasty. It sours your ability to love. It sours your ability to forgive. It shortens your temper. It sabotages your temperament and your ability to get along with people because that bitterness contaminates everything you touch, everybody you involve yourself with. That bitterness sours. Have you ever been in a room where somebody was sick to their stomach and they upchuck and somebody had to, the janitor had to come and clean that mess up? But y'all can still smell that smell, can't you? That's right. Some of you foul up every room you walk into. I don't care how many people are in there, how many, uh, if there are festivities, a business meeting, or a social gathering, whatever. You foul it up with your bitterness because you have to say something sarcastic. You have to have a little snide remark to add a little spice to the whole event that you're in because the bitterness is just oozing out of you. It's oozing out of your pores. It's, it just smells up the whole atmosphere. It reeks of ugliness. And you know why that bitterness is there? Because you have chosen not to forgive. Oh, I've been there, so I'm not talking about something I don't know. But God came along and uprooted that mess out of my spirit. Some of it took a few years, but he and I stayed at it together until that mess was gone. How long do you want to be bitter? How long do you want to be have your life soured by that? How long do you think you can live with that type of anger and murder in your heart? And yes, it's murder. You don't want to live like that. There's too much out there for you to have. There are too many relationships that you could enjoy. If that wasn't in there souring things up, always keeping things on the edge, or little short things, things that'll make you angry at the drop of a hat. You have little sharp comebacks and little, little cutting remarks. You know, all that comes from anger. Your criticism, oh my goodness. When you find yourself having critical things to say about any and everybody and... Mm, Boy, if she just get that weight. Oh, look at that hair. What's wrong with that? Look at them. Shoot, girl, did you see what? She had the nerve to step up. And, and that man, I don't know what he thinks. He ain't about nothing. I mean, everybody's got something wrong with them. 
And if you could just tell them off, you could you could help fix all their problems. It's your bitterness, baby. You're looking at the world through some nasty glasses. Glasses of hate, anger, resentment, spite, revenge, murder, jealousy, whatever. It all stinks, baby. God doesn't want you going through your life with all that bitterness in your heart. Think about that, babe. How can you fly? How can you get up off the ground with all that stuff weighing you down? It'll never happen. You've got to be willing to relinquish your rights to be angry and resentful. You've got to be willing to relinquish your right to hold grudges and ask God, Lord, I don't want to. But for your sake, give me the ability to forgive. And I will. With your help. But I need your help. Help me, Lord. I'm too angry. I'm tired of being this way. And mean it. And you will find out that all that old stuff that you've been stewing over half your life isn't worth a hill of beans once you get over it. And you'll enjoy a brand new, a newfound freedom. You won't ever want anybody to, to, to tie you up in knots like that ever again. Because now you can strut through your life free. Free of all that old baggage, that old stuff, that old garbage. It stinks, baby. It's got too much mold on it. Come on now. Let's get rid of that stuff. Let's get free. You can't fly up in the sky with all that stuff tied on you. It'll never happen. It just won't happen. Think about that now. Get free. Forgive. And then ask God also to heal your heart. He can remove every bit of that pain. He can remove all those hurts. He can take those hurts away so that it'll be like they never happened to you. When you tell the story, you won't feel any of it. It'll be like you're telling someone else's story or a movie you watched. Because it's no longer a part of you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Freedom is a beautiful thing, you guys. Enjoy your freedom. But you can't get free as long as you tie your ankles to that ball and chain. Every time you rehearse what he did to you and what she said to you and what they blamed on you and how they treated you and what they didn't do for you and who wasn't there for you and how hard it was for you and how your life screwed you over and how you always got the crappy under the stick. Oh, boy, by the time you get through, you're all tied up, mangled up in a web of self-pity, anger, bitterness, resentment. Mm. Now, you can drown in your own sorrows. Do you know that? God bless you.